All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. So today's video is a short one. This is just kind of an update video. So for those of you looking for a aftermarket, but OEM looking integrated solution for a Android based navigation system for your fourth generation CRV, that's from 2012 to 2016. This is Joing's newest head unit here. So this unit is running Android 10, and it truly is Android 10, and it is an update to a head unit that I had installed about a year ago in my 2013 CRV, and now I'm, I'm in a 2016 CRV, and I have the updated unit. The old one was basically the same operating system. It had buttons over here and over here. This one is a much nicer looking uh, unit. Um, it's got a row of capacitive buttons over here that light up when you turn on your headlights. So you got home, back. This is a volume, power, and mute button, which is an actual physical volume control, which everyone knows I really like that. This is a radio button and this is a navigation button. It does have a built-in microphone and there's a little reset port here. If for some reason, the unit would ever become stuck. So what do I have to say about it? Well, when you're looking for a head unit for your fourth generation CRV, you can go on Amazon or eBay and find a whole assortment of uh, units that look very similar to this. There is a very large difference though. On Amazon, you'll find units for as low as around $200 that look similar to this. Um, the one thing you'll notice though is they don't have a physical volume knob. And if you start getting into the specs, that's where these other units really start to kind of show their deficiencies. So most of them have two gigabytes of RAM or one gigabyte of RAM, a 32 gigabyte uh, ROM, at max uh, so if we're just talking numbers on paper uh, the joining unit here has a four gigabytes of ram and a 64 gigabyte rom or you can get it in eight gigabytes of ram with a 128 gigabyte rom depending on what you want i just went with the four gigabyte of ram version and again i did buy this with my own money because that's more than enough in my experience. I'm not sure what you would be running on your head unit, but it is available and they do run maybe just a hair faster. This does have an eight core processor in it, but the thing that really sets uh, the Joying brand unit apart from the other units is the screen. So this is a 16 by 10 ratio HD screen, and I know you're not going to be able to really see it depending on what resolution you watch this in, but there's literally no visible pixels. Everything is crystal clear. It's very wonderful. The screen and everything is very smooth. Let's see, no kind of lag or anything like that. Very, very nice. I do have it installed. If you'd like to see how this unit installs, I'll have a link to the other installation video on the older model. It is the exact same thing. So a few things to note real quick about factory integration with your fourth generation CRV. So you'll notice on our this generation of CRV, the stock radio goes here with no screen, and there's the iMid screen up here. So normally, if you put an aftermarket stereo in, uh, this would become completely useless up here, and everything would be controlled here. Well, the joining unit comes with a CAN interface module that plugs in and talks to the vehicle, so to speak. So things like your steering wheel controls are completely plug and play. And you'll see, so if I scroll through my screen here, I want to show you something kind of interesting. So, if I turn the radio on, I'll 
turn it down here. You can see that the radio station that is displayed on the screen here is transmitted to the vehicle along with the volume. So if I turn radio stations, you can see it changes on that screen as well, which is really neat because you could maybe have the radio on, go into another screen, like your Bluetooth phone screen or whatever, you can still see what's going on with the radio. So kind of interesting how that works, in my opinion. Um, you see it just changed, it says auxiliary extension when I turn the radio off. Pretty cool. Also, you know, the big thing, it does have just complete native support for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. That's probably one of the biggest reasons people buy this unit. But since it is an Android head unit, it can run applications natively. So even if I don't plug my phone into it. So for example, let's say I'm in an area with no cell service and you know, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay aren't really gonna do me any good. You can install an offline navigation amp app. Like in my case here, I have this iGo navigation uh, program plugged in. But, um, so that's just something to keep in mind. You can also install, if you uh, have like a Wi-Fi hotspot on your phone, you can install uh, apps directly on the unit. It is just like an Android phone or tablet. So you have the full Play Store. You can download any Android app to the head unit directly. So you could download Waze or Pandora or whatever you want directly onto the head unit. Or you can use them through your connection to your iPhone or your Android smartphone. You can also install apps like Netflix directly to the application or the head unit rather. So as you can see, and then you can watch Netflix or so your passenger can watch Netflix. Um, again, program like YouTube, same thing. That's so I do have an optional Contact subwoofer installed. Mavericks inbound. So watching HD video is quite an entertainment experience in the vehicle, especially with the, the subwoofer that I've installed in the back. On that note, this unit does support outputs for digital audio output, including a coaxial and a toss link connection, which would be fiber optic connection. So if you're into the high end car audio, it has outputs for that. It also has your standard um, pre outs for front and rear speakers, as well as a mono subwoofer output. And that's what I'm utilizing for a single 10 inch powered subwoofer in the rear. So if we go to our graphic equalizer, it does have a very nice equalizer. This is just like any other joining unit. Um, has some kind of virtual surround, bass enhancement, bass filters. These are nice because if you have a subwoofer, you can cut the low end of bass to your front and rear speakers. So you get more, less distortion on your speakers from the bass and they will kind of do more of the high outputs. Um, while we're talking about sound, it's got loudness controls. You can turn the amplifier on and off from here and then it's got a separate subwoofer control. So this is your subwoofer crossover. So I have it full range to the low end and a high pass cutoff at 125 hertz going to the subwoofer. Speed compensated volumes, the faster you go, the higher the sound gets. It's got just a bunch of high end features. Don't really have time to cover everything, but the main thing that I like about it is obviously the factory integration. 
you can, depending on where you're located, you need to consult the specifications for the unit. It does support installing a SIM card directly into the unit. So you always have a LTE connection on the head unit itself. I prefer to use a Wi-Fi hotspot. And Joing has also released an update for, it's an Android 12 update for this unit where it will support tethering over um, your phone. Uh, I personally prefer just to use, you know, a Wi-Fi hotspot for my phone. And a lot of times I'll just use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Okay, so I'll just give you a little demonstration. I'm just going to plug in my uh, Samsung. So I plug in my phone. It automatically connects. Let's see. So here we are in Android Auto. We have Pandora pulled up here. Um, just pretty much stock Android Auto. Still waiting for the Android Auto update where it will look kind of like CarPlay. We'll have a separate um, screens. But the only thing I guess to say about uh, Android Auto here is it is a kind of... Um, normal android auto experience except where the menu bar would normally be across the bottom it's set up this way along the side not really crazy about that personally because you kind of lose that feature to see the next song that comes up uh, when you're in the maps mode but like i said with the future release of android auto the new android auto we'll see what kind of features that brings there was an issue pre prior where night mode didn't work correctly but you can see as soon as I turn on my headlights, it goes into night mode. So everything works great there. That is just an update. So if you have an older model that's running Android 10 and you're having that same bug, you can update it to the latest update by visiting the Joying website. So this is just, like I said, a quick overview. Uh, for those of you maybe considering, you watch my other video and you're like, hey, the link I click on, the radio doesn't look like that anymore. It looks like this. It's basically the exact same thing. It's just better. So you still have all the integration like you saw in my last video. Uh, all the integration is there. Everything works great. I just use the built-in microphone. It's on the screen here. I don't even run the other microphone. I don't do a lot of hands-free calling on the unit, though. I'll be honest. But so far, no one has said that there was any problems. I mean, except that maybe I sounded like I'm in a car, but that's normal talking on any phone. And it does work good for any kind of uh, voice direction. Uh, I will just talk about two, uh, I won't really call them bugs. It's just kind of two things to note. So, like I said, all the steering controls up here work. The menu and this button here are for your iMid screen, but your source button, your left and right track, up and down volume, still work great with the stereo. But these, uh, down here, it's a back, a telephone hang up, a voice control button, and a telephone button right here. They do not work. And the reason for that is, is because those buttons are mapped to the iMid screen. So they are not run on the CAN bus network like the other buttons. So unfortunately, there is no way for those to work. At least not that I've figured out because you could uh, intercept the wiring and program them manually and they would work. But then you wouldn't be able to use the CAN bus buttons like the volume and all that. So, so obviously that's more important that we have these buttons working right here. So that's the one thing. Another thing to note is um, the compass. It does work uh, with this unit. There is a even an application if you go in here find it this vehicle settings application where if you click compass right here you can set the area and do a compass calibration and initiate that feature um, but the only problem that I've noticed is this unit goes into a sleep mode normally so it just goes to sleep, goes into a low power state, uses hardly any battery at all, 
and then that way we, when you turn actually when you turn the unit off and on you can see it comes right back to where it left off that quick but i will say that if the unit ever does have to go to a hard shutdown the problem i've noticed is it kind of like for some reason resets the calibration on the compass and it starts flashing and then if you like obviously drive in a circle or whatever it will have calibrated itself but it initiates a, a compass calibration so i kind of found a way to kind of avoid all that i have an aftermarket mirror in my crv right here you can see that has a compass in it um so i don't need the factory compass so i just reached up under the back headliner and unplugged the cable and then the compass disappeared off my screen for those of you out there again it would you can just use the factory compass but that would just be the one i guess minor bug in the system like i said is every now and then the unit completely shuts down if like say your car battery is low to avoid you know draining your battery and it seems like when you start it back up from that the compass is flashing until you either drive a little bit or go in a circle not a big deal but i wanted to mention it so one last thing i'll talk about real quick is the backup camera um so when you get this unit from joying the backup camera on our crv the lower levels that don't have a built-in screen here is always on the imid screen so as you know you put it in reverse that that screen comes on with your backup camera there is a very easy way to connect the backup camera to this uh, unit as well. On the harness, there is an RCA in jack. Um, I show in the other video how to make that connection to the back of the iMID screen. It is slightly different if you have a 12 through 14 or a 15 and 16 unit. I think 14 might have been the, the change of the year. Uh, but there's just two wires that are your video positive and video negative that go to the IMED screen from the backup camera. So when I put it in reverse on here, you'll see both screens come on. So you have the backup camera on both screens. So I can live with that. There's really no way to disable it on this screen up here without causing a whole bunch of problems. So you just have it on both screens. Uh, another thing that's kind of neat, you know, while you're going down the road, if you didn't know, there's a secret menu. If I hit the menu button and then press and hold the source and menu buttons at the same time for about hmm, five seconds, it'll bring up this service diagnostic screen. I go down to camera, and it will bring up the camera. So you can actually do this while you're driving down the road. Uh... It will just bring it up on that screen, but you can change the view by hitting this button here. See, there's our down view. There's our wide view. There's our normal view. So yeah, you can do that. If I put it in reverse right now, you can see it's changing the view on that as well. So that really is the only way to change the view if you had to do that because changing the view was something you did on with the volume button on the factory stereo. But it seems to default to the uh, the wide view, which is not necessarily a bad thing. That's probably the, the best view for most people. Okay, so I just wanted to run through this real quick. Uh, obviously, this isn't a full-fledged feature video. I mean, I've done a lot of other videos on the Join brand stuff. They're all pretty much the same. I just wanted to kind of cover some of the vehicle-specific and the updates to this unit. Installation went well. You reuse your factory uh, vents and your hazard button. Everything integrates nicely, at least on my SE model. This, I only have experience with the LX and the SE model. The higher trim levels use a slightly different unit. Just the wiring is different to, to replace the larger screen on the factory unit. So if you have any questions, comments, maybe something I didn't cover, leave them in the comment section below. Be sure to like the video. 
There'll be links in the description to where you can buy this unit. And I'll also uh, leave a link. I did find a harness that allows you to retain the USB, the factory USB port. So we have our USB port in the center console on the CRV. Uh, it actually is plugged into the back of the iMid screen, the cable, but I found an adapter that allows you to plug that connection into the joying unit so you can use your factory USB port. In my other video, I showed how I installed a USB port right down here below the shifter. I did not have to do that this time. I just kept the factory USB port for the stereo. So until next time, we'll see you later.